Must be a million of them! Nope, just one. This ain't a real fiction story, people. This ain't a movie. What's up, guys? I'm Jeremy. And we are A Reviews. And today we have a very big and special opportunity with the 2020 Ford F-250, but not just any F-250. This is a brand new Tremor package. But today we're gonna take a look and see why this truck is so badass. Oh yeah, everybody now. So guys, for 2020, Ford refreshed the Super D. You can see it's got the new face. But they also added this Tremor package, which costs you... $4,535. And it's optional on XLT, Lariat, King Ranch, and Platinum Crew Cabs. But there's a catch there. So with the 6-foot bed and the 4x4 trims. Exactly. You can't get anything in the Tremor package. If you wanted the short bed, do you want the long bed? and you want the Tremor package, unfortunately you're going to have to skip out on that because honestly this is a big truck as it is, so I can see why Ford did that. But Ford did something different compared to the competition. Instead of the competition having their off-road models on just their base um, heavier duty trucks, Ford has it on their F-250, which this one is, and 350, but only the single, single rear wheel options which I find awesome because they added a little bit more to it and gave people what they want. So if they just wanted a 250 because they're not towing much, they have this. But if they need a little bit more power and a little bit more of a stronger frame, they can do that with the F350. So Grant, let's talk competition. We got the 2020 Chevy Silverado Z01 HD. Then, then you've got the GMC Sierra 2500 HD AT4. And then 2020 Ram Power Wagon. Exactly. And the Power Wagon's only available, I think, with the uh, 6.4 Hemi. But the Tremor package is available with the 6.7 Power Strip, the brand new one. But we'll get into how beastly that thing is later. But now, let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at the Ford F-250 Tremor. So, coming up and looking up at the front of the Ford F-250 Tremor, you can see Ford did re restyle it a little bit. The grille extends more into the headlights. They get this more C shape instead of the uh, blockier shape. But Grant, go over lighting. So on the Lariats, most options have LED all over with LED headlights, fog lights, and blinkers. Yep, and you can see that even since the turn, since they re-tweaked it. You can see that the C-section taillights are no longer one piece. They actually have this break in here for the turn signal. Now, lower trims will obviously come with halogens. They will also come with halogen fog lights. I think that this one also does come with an available halogen fog light. But coming back over here, you got your ginormous Ford symbol. Like, I can literally half stretch my hand. I'm literally stretching my hand out from pinky to thumb, and it's almost literally as long as that. <laughs> But you can also see that this one has tow hooks and you got the Super Duty engraved on the hood there. I think they did that on... Wow! I'm gonna jump over here. And this one also has the optional clearance lights up here that are smoked and amber. They're LEDs, which is very nice. Um, overall, this refresh of the 2020 uh, Super Duty looks really cool. I actually prefer it over to the other one. Um, but definitely, I do wish the LED headlights would have come standard, but hey, it's a work truck. You're supposed to have some cost cutting, and it's not all about whose headlights can produce the brightest freaking beam. So now let's go run over to the side and tell you guys more about the Tremor, because there's a lot of stuff around the side that we have to talk about. So coming around the side of the Ford Tremor, this thing is the off-road version of the F-250. So it gets Rancho shocks that were developed by both Rancho and Ford for an amazing 10.8 inches of ground clearance. That's quite a bit for a truck like this, but it's not a full-on hardcore model like a Raptor of that sort. But it has a two-inch lift up front, and I think a little bit of a lift in the back, so it's kind of got a leveling kit. 
One of the biggest quirks about this truck is its massive size. This thing is 250 inches even long. 250. It's also 80 inches on the money wide, 159.8 inches long in the wheelbase, and it's also 81 inches tall. Now, if I step out to the side here, you guys can see this one is the Super Crew model. There's two different other cab configurations available. Um, you've got a regular cab or you've got an extended cab with the smaller door in the back. Don't go with the extended cab. Go for the crew cab because extended cabs have no room. And there's also different bed options available. There's a and a half or five and three quarters bed. Here's the six point or six point seven five foot bed. And there's also an eight, which they also op offer on the uh, crew cab models, which I think is a little bit too big for a truck like this. But hey, some people need the extra room and the uh, extra cargo. But coming over to the wheels here, these are 18 inch Tremor specific wheels Wrangler Duratrax that are that are 285 millimeters wide. I'm surprised they didn't go with a slightly wider wheel like 295, but then again, this is not a Ford Raptor. But as you can see, LED turn signal in here. These ones are the power power scope mirrors. With the push of a button, you can extend them out power. They go in and out. But you can also fold them. which is nice, folding them back out. This Lariat trim also comes with the very cool feature. I don't know how well you guys can see it. There's an LED spotlight on the edge of the mirrors here. Your gas cap is right here. You have a, uh, a locking diesel uh, port here in DEF because this one is the diesel. You see this one doesn't have uh, body colored, or this one has body colored fender flares. I find that very nice. This one's also got the Tremor sticker right there. You can see that the taillights are also a little different, but we'll talk about more on that when we go into the back. Now, here also you've got Ford's keyless entry keypad, obviously. And for the Tremor, you get these specific running boards here that honestly, they're way high for me and I'm six foot three. And it makes it, I have to kind of step up here and then I have to hold but what's also different for 2020 is that Ford decided to actually make this vent here functional. Yes, you heard that right. 250 nameplate, this vent's now functional as well as your trim level, which this one's a Lariat. And then down here, if you get the power stroke, you get that 6.7 there. So now let's go look out back because that's where all the quirks and all the features and all the handiness of Ford's innovative thinking definitely got them somewhere and made this truck really utilitarian so guys coming around to the rear end of the super duty you can see there's a couple of changes the super duty is now em uh, emblazoned into the tailgate you have full led taillights like just like up front even the reverse lights are leds which is absolutely awesome but you can see that these taillights are actually a bit bigger than the uh, last one and the blind spot sensor is just a little bit uh, bigger. But here's your big ass trailer hitch because the Tremor package here reduces your a maximum tow rating down to 15,000 pounds. But with this new 6.7 and the right configuration, you can tow a maximum of 37,500 pounds, class leading and by a long shot. Remember how this thing can only tow 35,000 pounds and then Chevy or Dodge comes in with like 35,100? Well, Ford just put it ahead. And you can also see the Ford badge moved up to here when it was down here before. You also got a backup camera. I'm not sure what this little lens is for. I'm not sure if it's a, it's a, a little LED spotlight. But here you got your four and seven pin wiring harnesses as well as that thing there to uh trailer. for the trailer hitch i think oh that little thing there is for the spare tire because it's housed under there this one has backup sensors which is very helpful especially if you got a big ass truck like this but grant go open the tailgate because there's multiple ways that you can open it you can open it from the key fob you can open it from the button 
or you can open it from the interior because this one's hydraulic. Now, some models do not have this. This one does because it has the uh, ultimate package, as they call it. But with a truck like this, it's the same exact thing you'd find on the Raptor, and you would absolutely need it. So now that I'm in the bed, this one doesn't have a bed liner. Honestly, I think that all trucks should come with bed liners because you're going to beat the crap out of this thing. And especially with it being aluminum, it's kind of, it, it doesn't dent very easily, but it scratches real easily. Now, coming over here, you got LED box lighting with the light here. I don't know how well you guys can see that. You also got two tie-down hooks there, two more up front. Um, you also got the power sliding rear window there. Um, overall, there's not too much back here. Um, oh, payload. 7,850 pounds max. I couldn't find any figures on this one, um, unfortunately, but all the numbers on this truck are all class leading. Horsepower, torque, all that sorts of stuff. But now, let's go ahead and jump inside of the Super Duty, and we're going to see if Ford made any changes. Alrighty guys, so as it is a windy day, I'm going to make this quick, but let's jump inside of the Ford Super Duty F250 here. Take the key fob. You expect it. Ford's always got the same dang key fob. Ford, you kind of need to do something about this. You need to make some more personalization. I know it's cheaper for you guys, but seriously, you guys need to put some more differentiation in it. But you have remote start on this one, which you lock the car or the truck up, push the button twice, and literally within half a second, it starts up, which is really nice. If you want to turn it off, you just push on the button once. Now, this has keyless entry with um, push button start. So here you can come up to the door. There's this black ridge here. If you just tap on it, it's locked. It's not even like a real button, but you also have a mechanical key here. Ford does a sensor behind the door, which is very nice. Or you could also use the keyless keypad. I wish that it was kind of integrated into the, the door like some of the uh, other Fords are. But looking at the interior, you're gonna see it definitely looks a lot like the Ford Raptor that we had just recently reviewed which you guys can go up there on the top right to go see that. But getting in, obviously with lifted and a heavy duty truck, it's going to be big. Um, but shutting the door, that is honestly one of the best sounding doors I've ever heard. It's just so solid. But let's go ahead now. Again, push button start. So right here's the start button. Put your foot on the brake and press the button. So what you're going to see first off here is this huge, I think it's either seven or eight inch productivity screen, and it comes on Lariat trims. Um, it can show your trip mileage, your average fuel economy, off-road status, your my view, all that sorts of stuff. You can check your truck info, set up a trailer, see your off-road status, and get all your um, settings in here, which we will go over the safety features later. Um, the thing that I have to say about this screen is it is very slow, and it has a very poor uh, refresh rate. That is one thing that I really noticed. Um, lower models will get a, uh, I think it is color, um, LCD screen, but it's very, very much pixelated. Um, but anyway, let's come back here. Back to the steering wheel, you can see it's the exact same design that's in the uh, F-150. This one is leather wrapped, it is not heated, um, as far as I know. I haven't seen a button to turn on the heated steering wheel. But the funny thing is about this truck, it's a power tilt telescopic steering column. There's your controls for this LCD screen in there. Here's your cruise control. This one has adaptive cruise control, which is new for 2020. Here's your media controls. Um, down here as well, your phone pickup and hang up. This one has the Bang & Luxon, um 10 speaker audio system with a subwoofer and a 1000 watt amplifier. So let's come back to the digital cluster here. You can see analog gauges there. You got your oil pressure engine temp as well as your fuel gauge and your turbo boost pressure because this one's a diesel. This one's the 6.7 Power Stroke. They had, um, this is the third generation, I believe, of that engine. 
and we'll go over some more of those updates when we get under the hood. Um, but coming over here, you got your 8-inch SYNC 3 infotainment system. Not going to go over it because I've already went through it before in literally every single Ford review that I've done. Um, it's simple to use, it's nice, but I think Hyundai's systems are better. Coming up here, you got a button to turn your engine braking on. If you press it again, it becomes automatic. If you press it again, it turns it off. Um, traction control, hazard light, your trail control, which is special to the Tremor. Here you have lane keeping assist, which is very cool. Um, I'm really surprised Ford put that in there. Um, coming down here is your controls here. Um, you got dual zone climate control on this one. You have ventilated seats as well as heated seats. That I was not expecting. That's quite nice. But coming back down to the big ass center console here. There's some wood trim here. It feels very nice. It feels genuine. I'm not sure if it's real, but it feels extremely nice. Opening the cover up, you would get exposed to a USB-C port as well as a USB-A. And you also have a wireless charge pad, which is very nice. But coming back here, you got some more storage here and absolutely enormous storage space. You got cup holders here. The center console is leather wrapped and Grant's gonna open it. And as in every single Ford, the center console is huge as hell. I've never seen such a huge center console and it, I think it personally beats the uh, the Rams new, or the new 1500, especially the F-150 um, as far as cargo carrying management. But there's also pen holders on the side there. Now going over interior materials, surprisingly it's soft touch here. I was not expecting that. It's got some stitching there. Even it's soft touch here. Um, of course, you're going to run into your hard plastics. Back at the door panel, it's also soft touch. This piece is hard touch, though. Um, kind of expected that. Softly padded center console. There's some more of that wooden stitching. Silver accented handle there. I like how Ford does their handle like this and allows you to open it like that, which I find very nice. It's just an easy reach. This one has power memory seats. Coming back over here, you've got a secondary glove box, which the F-150 didn't have. I think that Ford should have put the uh, um, extra glove box in there because that's actually a pretty decent size. Opening the glove box down here, it's a little bit smaller than the F-150, but one thing that I am really going to say negative is that there's a passenger airbag on off switch. I don't care if the vehicle does not have a passenger in it, it needs to have the airbag, the automatic airbag system because honestly that is very dangerous right there and I really don't like it. So Ford you, you kind of needed to do something right there. Now, I know sometimes they uh, mod these trucks to do certain things, but it is what it is. So coming back over here, you got your window controls. It's auto up down for the front windows only. Um, there's no auto down in the rear. I wish that it was because I think that the F-150 has all auto up down windows. Up here is your power tilt telescopic, uh, or your power, uh, telescoping mirrors here, the power scope mirrors. You can see that this one's also got blind spot, but it's got a little tr supplementary uh, trailer here. What's cool about the blind spot system is that it actually includes trailer coverage. So as, if you set it up in the info uh, screen here, up in your trailer, um, your towing status and all that sorts of stuff, it will actually measure. If you put the measurement of your trailer in, the blind spot system will detect how far it needs to go in order to cover the trailer, which I find awesome. These are also power folding, as you can see. Your window con your controls are there. Your little LED spotlight buttons are right here. You can turn them on individually there, which I don't know why they're not turning on. Down here is your headlight control, um, fog lights, your bed light, your dimmer. Coming down here is your release for your uh, tailgate. And Ford is the only one to do power adjustable pedals. As you can see, they're moving, which honestly, Ford really pioneered this like 20 years ago, which I find very nice. This one has a manual parking brake with the brake release here. Honestly, you didn't even have to pull that very much to get it to come off, but I'm going to put that back on and my foot slipped. I wish that honestly it was electronic, um, but you know, it is what it is. Your turn signals up here as well as your wiper controls. Up here is your selector for your 10-speed automatic transmission. Yes, I know. It's your 10-speed automatic transmission. This is brand new for 2020. Putting it into reverse. 
You got a backup camera here with trajectory. The camera is a little bit dull in resolution. I think Ford needs to update that, but you can also zoom it in. Um, I think you could probably get some more uh, uh, cameras, like trailer hitch assist and stuff like that. You got your trailer brake controller over there. Yes, I know the trailer's disconnected. Your gain adjustment and all that sorts of stuff. Um, coming down here, there's more storage. Ford's also got super big storage down here, which is nice. 10-way power adjustable pedal, or um, front seats here, I think. Yeah, Grant's got lumbar on his side. His is two-way, I have two-way. I think Ford needs to put four-way lumbar, um, but I'm kind of nitpicking. Coming over here, an auto-dimming mirror. Up here is your controls, your home link. Let's see if it passes the visor test. One, two, three, in typical Ford fashion. Grant do it because you never know if it's gonna be a Volkswagen Jetta. Good job, Ford. Now on this one, you have six auxiliary switches. These are optional, so you can hook up some roof lights and stuff. There's a little thing here for your uh, sunglasses, which there's a little bit of padding in there, but barely. Um, as I said, the uh, sliding rear window, you control it from that switch there. LED interior lighting, which I find very nice. Here's your moonroof control, which this is equipped with it. Um, the dual pane panoramic sunroof. You close the shades with these buttons here. There's a little storage cubby up here. Overall, I really love the interior of the Super Duty. It feels actually quite nice for $78,000, and I'm glad that Ford put some soft touch materials with um, some nice stitching in there, but obviously this is a truck, so it's gonna have to do truck duties. So now let's go back into the rear and show you personally why I said that the crew cab is the better option if you're gonna buy this truck. So jumping into the rear of the F-250 Super Duty uh, Super Crew, see that these doors actually open quite wide. Um, they almost open 90 degrees, but the extended cab ones, they have clamshell doors, but the extended cabs come all the way back here. Yes, I said that right. They fold 180 degrees out from the interior, which is awesome. But, as I see the Ford emblem on the running boards here, sitting in the back of this thing, you can easily see why I would pick the Crew Cab uh, Super Crew version. I have the seat adjusted for myself. I'm six foot three. I've got more than a foot of leg room. Like, I, I could probably stick a whole entire ruler in there and have enough room. There's also mat pockets in the back here. If I st sit up real tall, my head does brush, uh, is barely brushing the ceiling. Um, let's shut the door. Still sounds as solid as the front. But let's see if it passes the window test. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It passes. It just barely passes. It's literally like the window is like a sixteenth of an inch from the freaking edge of the, the seal there, which is nice. But... Ford. Even down there is hard touch. This is this little piece here is barely even padded, but you still got the same storage space as you do up front. But I think honestly, Ford really did cheapen out on the the back end of this thing. But it's a truck, especially if you have kids, that is probably going to get torn up. I'm going to slide to the center seat here to tell you. Yes, it's tight. Um, the seat kind of sits up a little bit higher, but I noticed it's a lot more cushy and it's a lot more comfortable. Um, also on this Super Duty, surprisingly you have rear air vents. I don't see too many of them on trucks, but on here you got a 12 volt port right there. You've got another USB-C and a USB-A port, and you've also got a household power outlet and two level heated seats in the back. I was not expecting that. There's also mat pockets back on this side too. Now, coming over to this side where the seat is the whole way back in its tracks, comfortably adjusted for Grant. Still got monumental amounts of freaking leg room. It's, it's incredible. That's why I tell you guys, get the crew cab because the extended cab, your literal space is like that, like not even much. It's like if he would have kept the seat going back for about another second, it would have crushed, it literally would be like right there. Right there is literally how you sit in the extended cab versions of the trucks. And with me being six foot three, I like to stretch out. 
and definitely the extended cabs do not do that very well. Also, in typical Ford fashion, they got the ratchety head restraint, so you can sit there and annoy the heck out of your uh, your driver. There's two cup holders here pulling down this center console, pushing this little button. There's two more. Now, I'm going to step out, and there's this little pull strap on this side. Pull on it, and you can fold these seats up. And it exposes this little cargo bin here, which is actually detachable. If you pull the two leather straps and it comes down, you can also pull, there's a little lock button there. So you can expose a completely flat load floor. Honestly, I'm surprised that Ford put this there. I, I don't know if this is an option, um, but I don't know how well you guys are able to tell. This thing has a completely flat load floor. Literally, just like the Raptor, I would have no problem sleeping in this thing as I almost lost my hat. I'm going to probably no problem sleeping in this thing because literally you could probably hide a couple dead bodies back here. <laughs> don't do that, guys. Don't go to jail. Please don't. We love our subscribers the way they are. Exactly, because you guys give us awesome reviews like this. But And the motivation to. Yep, exactly. Now, the only sad thing is, is that Grant's got something I don't. Yeah. The only the passenger side rear door has this and the other driver's side rear door doesn't. You have a little strap in the back there to fold down that second seat there that exposes um a tire jack kit so you can replace everything with your spare tire and stuff like that. But honestly, Ford could have probably done something back here and provided a little bit more storage. But now let's go under the hood and see what's different with this. 2020 refresh of the Ford Super Duty. This is the third generation of the 6.7 liter power stroke turbo diesel V8. Ford made a ton of improvements to this power stroke to make it have best in class horsepower and best in class torque. This thing has 475 horsepower available at 2600 RPM. Now Grant, how much torque does this thing have? Sixteen hundred, but it, it works. And the funny part is, is Ford's not being like Dodge and making a pussy um, output of this engine. This one has one thousand fifty pound foot of torque. Dodge is limiting theirs and making you pay extra to get the one thousand pound foot of torque. Ford just said the hell with it and put it in there. This thing has direct injection and a crazy. Compression ratio of 15.8 to 1. That means this thing's got some lead to it. This one is hooked up to 4x4. There is rear wheel drive available. And this has the brand new 10 speed torque shift automatic transmission. It's a more heavier duty version of the one that's in the F 150. Now, curb weight, I would guesstimate, is around 7,000 pounds. But because of this truck being aluminum, it could be even lighter compared to the competition. Now, fuel economy on this thing, not rated by um, the EPA. But I have seen in um, Motor Trends trust testing of the 2017 Super Duty that they awarded for Truck of the Year for 2018. They were getting up to 21 highway miles to the gallon. That is insane on a truck that has close to 900 pound-foot of torque, over 400 horsepower, 
weighs 7,000 pounds, 4x4, four four, and ha probably has the aerodynamics of a freaking fridge. Oh wait, that's the G-Class. <laughs> maybe a French door fridge, maybe, I don't know. <laughs> let's go ahead now and let's talk safety because that's where the F-250 jumps ahead. So let's go to the safety features of the F-250. Now, all of this equipment is not going to be available for 350 or 450. It's only 250. You got pre-collision assist with automatic, automatic emergency braking, no pedestrian detection, automatic high beams switched on and off um, with traffic, lane departure warning. There's no lane keep assist because of the hydraulic steering system in the um, Super Duty. And then you've also got blind spot information system with trailer coverage. So you could set the length of your trailer and it will extend the blind spot out. There we go. Let's go ahead and drive the Super Duty. I'm quite nervous about this. <laughs> but honestly, getting it all the way up here wasn't really that hard, so that's at least good. That's why there's such a feature called trail control. First things first, this has the optional adaptive steering for $1,000. Um, so at low speeds, it firms up a little bit. There is a shit ton of play in the steering wheel, I'm telling you. But obviously the truck is supposed to be lazy. It's not supposed to have super darty steering like a Miata. I mean, I can feel the truck doing something like right here, but it's like, I gotta really wiggle this thing to get it to start moving. But it's got good feedback. It's very smooth. Um, I don't feel any rough points. As we go through a couple puddles here. The tremor, surprisingly, Handled it, no problem. That pothole didn't even take anything out on this truck. Now that one, it did. you felt that one, but obviously this is supposed to be a firmer suspension because this is an off-road truck and it needs to have a firmer suspension. You can't expect it to have a super duper freaking soft suspension and all that sorts of stuff. Oh dear lord. We're gonna see. True. I'm gonna give it a little beans. This thing feel this thing, it has a strong torque push to it, but it gains speed slowly. You feel all that torque, but it feels slow because of all the truck's weight. Alrighty. Let's see what this truck can do. Remember you gotta break torque it to the temple. Break torque it a little bit. Oh. A lot of tire spin. Whoa, even more. Whoa, ho, ho, ho. Holy sh**. <laughs> That's what a thousand fifty uh, freaking pound foot of torque does, guys. These diesels are not. They're not freaking. They're not pussies. They're freaking. They're no joke. They get hot. <laughs> Huge shout out to TriStar Ford because this is a big opportunity. And honestly, driving something bigger than a full-size truck was honestly one of my wishes. And dream come true. Exactly. I'm going to kind of hustle it around this corner a little bit. Now, obviously, this is not supposed to be a sports truck. It's not a Raptor where it will literally not have a problem with it. And roasted tires. Whoa. Tire spit. It's, it's, got, it's got turbo lag. No doubt. But once that turbo starts spooling up, it just freaking takes out like freaking a bat in hell. It takes off like a bat in hell. It's so freaking wild. All right. Oh, We're going to do this again. We're going to try it. Do it traction control off. I'm just going to floor it. Oh. Whoa! Holy Christ! <laughs> that spun the tires for sure! God! That spun it more than the Fusion! That spun it more than the Accord! Holy... <laughs> this truck's got ass! <laughs> oh my God, Skylar, I wish you were here. I wish you weren't freaking sick. <laughs> Just red lines throw up, right? Wow!
Nope. It just holds the gears. That is a surprise to me. Oh. <laughs> and there went a little bit of water under the windshield. <laughs>